The Department of Health said there were just over 37,000 infections in the last 24 hours, a drop of 6.5% compared to figures from last Thursday. It marks the 11th time in 12 days that cases have fallen week on week and comes as separate official data suggests infection rates are dropping in nine out of 10 local authorities. Well, this is so inconvenient, isn't it? Because medics, opposition politicians, SAGE members and others have been calling for face coverings, social distancing and work from home orders for weeks now. Except that Treasury officials have calculated that those measures, supposedly low level measures, would cost the British economy 18 billion quid, sinking Britain further into the red. After Freedom Day, which was described as reckless by Sir Keir Starmer, cases fell. No apology, no retraction. The facts don't matter in 2021. And now cases are once again falling. And yet still, my colleagues elsewhere in the media are badgering ministers about why we haven't already rolled out Plan B, which, by the way, is a plan for further societal, health and financial damage. So Jeremy Farah, a top government scientist, by the way, three words that send a shiver down my spine, is on his way out of SAGE and he wants more measures with cases falling. But of course, the facts don't matter. Meanwhile, the House of Commons authorities are being urged to make all MPs wear masks again. That's right. Masks are coming back, folks. When is this nonsense around masks ever going to end? If you're going to mandate something like face coverings, the burden of proof is on you to demonstrate they work. Perhaps we should have another look at that graph comparing mask-free Sweden with mask-loving police state Lithuania. Here it is. I never tire of seeing this graph. There you go, Lithuania in black with cases through the roof. Sweden cases flatlining. Sweden, no lost businesses, no closed schools, no lockdowns, no social distancing, no mask mandates. Meanwhile, Lithuania has one of the strictest vaccine passport systems in the world, second only to China. I love that graph. I might get a tattoo of it made at some point. Florida lifted their mask mandate months ago. It was called Neanderthal thinking by Joe Biden and cases fell. Florida now have among the lowest number of cases in America, but their governor was called Ron Death Santis. And yet still you have examples of the ongoing insanity from our American cousins right here. Check this out. There you go. What a magical family Christmas that is. Tell me it's not a cult. Tell me it's not a religion. Now, let me burden you with a few more facts. Former SAGE advisor Dr. Colin Axon, an engineer and an expert on the transmission of aerosol particles, told me on this programme that masks are nothing more than a comfort blanket entrenching bad behaviour. That's right, entrenching bad behaviour. He would not recommend them at all. That was his opinion. Well, on masks, what about Peru, whose mask mandate was so strict that police ordered anybody caught not wearing a mask to dig a grave for those who had died of COVID. That is an actual fact. Well, where are they on the global league table of COVID deaths at the moment? Let's take a look. Oh dear, they're at the very top. That's right, Peru has the highest per capita death rate from COVID in the world. So disappointing, I thought the masks were fantastic and saved lives. The fact that members of the scientific community, the political establishment and the media are pushing for debatable measures like this at a time when cases are falling tells you everything you need to know. They don't want this to end and they want to control you. That's why in 2021, the facts don't matter. They never did. It's not a conspiracy theory. We've lived through this madness, which makes it far from a conspiracy and very real indeed. And I will take no lectures from many Television celebrity GPs, you'll see them, they're ten a penny, urging Plan B restrictions. However, GPs closed their doors in the course of the pandemic. They literally chained the gates of their surgeries shut. And the NHS as a whole simply ignored other illnesses. I know you've told me your stories, each and every one heartbreaking. For too long, the message from the NHS was, if it's not COVID, 
We don't care. That's been the culture for the last 18 months. Now, I've always given the Prime Minister credit for Freedom Day on the 19th of July. And it's important now that the politics once again trump the so-called science whose modelling has badly failed. The science, a partisan, narrow and unchallenged opinion of some experts, but not all, not all. The science has left us a poorer, sicker, more divided country with one of the highest COVID death tolls in the world. So it doesn't look like these ruinous measures did much good. But many want to sign us up for months more of this, possibly years, which is unforgivable, given that we can now see the damage that has been done. The war on COVID is one that we have lost. And there has, in my view, been too much collateral damage along the way. Damaged lives, a wrecked economy, a 12 million long NHS waiting list and a soaring non-COVID death toll. So this war on COVID must end and it must never be started again. Well, it should have ended in May 2020 when it was clear that three weeks did not flatten the curve. In the end, although resolutely ignored by policymakers and so-called experts, the facts will ultimately prevail. Professor Jay Bhattacharya calls lockdowns the biggest public health mistake in history, and he is one of the most respected and decorated medics on the planet from Stanford Medical School in California. The penny will drop among the public. It's happening already. In spite of the fear-mongering, which in my view is what mask mandates are all about, the people will realise what we've done and how horribly wrong all of this was. And it will be your will and your determination that brings this ideological, highly politicised anti-science nightmare to an end. And that, let me tell you, is a fact. This is GB News.